My name is Lisa McGifford. I'm with Consumers Union Safe Patient Project. And I'm going to talk to you today about an issue that has come to our attention and that we're taking some action on regarding hospital infection accountability, I think is the best way to say, to talk about this. But basically, we're asking state health departments to use the full array of their authority to get the hospitals with high infection rates especially those with consistently high rates, like over a multiple years or in multiple categories of infections, to take more action to try to get those hospitals to improve their care. So what we discovered, what is what we're calling a cultural firewall, firewall is a word that the agency staff often use, and it's among public health systems. And the philosophy is that Infection data collected by an agency infection control staff should not be shared with or used by health department staff who are responsible for inspections or for investigating complaints. The reason given to us is that hospitals will no longer work with the agency infection preventionists if they collaborate with the enforcers of the patient safety laws. And thus their theory is that this would cause infections to increase. We believe this is a fairly widespread practice or policy across the United States, but we're working in California to challenge this sort of policy, sometimes written, sometimes unwritten. And I want to first give a shout out to Carol Moss and Alicia Cole for really getting this issue moving. I've been aware of it for years but they started raising the issue in the California Infection Committee. That's a state advisory committee on, on the infection reporting system and in preventing infections. So they started raising this issue in those meetings, and that's where they wanted to involve the regulator staff, the staff that did the regulatory work, to participate in a committee that they were working on. And in the process, they found out that the two divisions of the health department never talked to each other, and they weren't going to allow any uh, cross-coordination or collaboration between those two groups. And so Alicia and Carol went to meet with the governor's office, and then they eventually met with the head of the California Department of Public Health, and they definitely set the stage. And then in January, late January, Consumers Union and members of our Safe Patient Network here in California filed an administrative petition calling on the California Department of Public Health to require its infection program to share information with their regulatory program and to actually collaborate in making hospitals with significantly higher infection rates more accountable for improving prevention. Now, this petition is uh, kind of unique to California. They have a law that allows citizens to file a petition with state agencies and ask them to do things, and it requires the agency to respond within 30 days or hold a public hearing. We have not heard from the agency yet other than through media coverage where they said they would respond in the required period of time and that will be towards the end of February when the clock stops ticking. For this petition, we did something really simple. It's so simple that I can't believe nobody's ever done that. And I think most everybody on this call has seen re state hospital infection reports or you've looked at some of the hospital compare reports. And so you're familiar with how the data is put out there. But if you've looked at a state's report, it usually is a bunch of numbers and very complicated array of data that most consumers would not be able to analyze. And then there's often a very simplified version that shows whether a hospital is no different than the a national baseline that was established, or it's better than the national baseline, or it's worse than the national ba baseline which is a pretty basic analysis. But we didn't know of anybody that had gone through and looked at it over a period of years or looked at it across the different types of infections. By that, I mean MRSA infections or central line 
associated infections, different types of infections. So we took three years of data from California and put it on a spreadsheet, and we found that nearly 60% of California hospitals had significantly higher infection rates in at least one type of infection. We also found that 38% of those hospitals had high rates over multiple years, and that amounted to 95 hospitals. And many of the first category, the 60%, had high rates in more than one type of infection. And so when these kinds of patterns exist, putting patients' lives in danger, an expectation that hospitals will voluntarily comply with infection control standards is, in our opinion, an inappropriate response. So what we want to do is to bring in the regulators to use their enforcement tools to make the hospitals improve. And in California, in our conversations in the infection committee that mostly were directed by Carol and Alicia, there was a lot of back and forth about how, how do you make these hospitals accountable. And so we learned that what the infection program does is they send a letter to the hospitals that have significantly high rates of infection, and they say something like, would you let us come in and help you? And if the hospital doesn't invite them in, then they can't go in. And we think that's not an appropriate response with hospitals that are showing that year after year they are not improving their infection rates. In the process of this, we also discovered through a public records request that Carol Moss did that California was way behind on its regular inspections, which are supposed to be done every three years. There were 131 hospitals that had not been inspected in five years, and these are state law inspectors. So on top of all these high rates, there were hospitals that had not been inspected, and we thought that was a significant problem. Come to find out when we did the analysis, it didn't show that hospitals that had not been inspected had higher rates than those that had been inspected, but we do think that the inspections are important. So typically these inspectors, they go into a hospital to ensure that laws are being followed and also that patient safety standards are being met. And we think that these inspectors should have full information about the hospital's history. Is this an isolated incident that there is a breach of infection control? Or if there was a complaint about an, that involves a infection, is this an isolated incident? Or is it a pattern of problems with preventing infections? And if they find that there's a ladder, we think the regulators should use all the tools available to create change, including monetary fines, meaningful corrective action plans that can be enforced. And what we found out, of course, because of this firewall, was that these inspectors never look at the infection information before they do inspections or before they go and respond to complaints. Before they do inspections, they look at medication error reports and reports of other medical errors. They look at the hospital's history of complaints and any prior investigations, but they never look at the infection rates or the history of infections at that hospital. And we think that's something that should change. So in our petition, we called on the health department to require that the infection program share real-time infection data with the regulatory program in a format that's most usable to that regulatory program. It's called the Licensing and Certification Program. Then we also want, we're asking them to require that the regulatory program review each hospital's infection data in preparation for conducting their routine state licensure inspections every three years and when investigating complaints that involve infection. We asked each hospital identified in the data from the infection program annual reports those that have significantly high rates in any category, we're asking the health department to make that trigger a timely complaint with the regulatory program about that specific type of infection, and that would cause an investigation as if a complaint had been filed and, and a looking into their infection prevention practices. And we're 
suggesting that they begin by using the latest report, which was 2015 data. We want the health department to impose fines when hospitals fail to report certain infections that are caused by the use of contaminated devices. There is a separate law that requires that, and we believe that those are not being reported. And the state health department has the authority to impose penalties, financial penalties, for what they call immediate jeopardy in situations where patients are some kind of noncompliance with infection prevention is likely to cause serious injury or death to one or more patients. So they can impose these penalties now, but in, in determining the amount of the penalty, the law requires that they look at whether it's a widespread problem or a pattern, and we don't know if they've ever applied that, and so we're calling on them to do that. And then, of course, we're asking them to do their three-year inspections in a timely manner and to catch up with the backlog. We are uh, suggesting that they look at the hospitals that have significantly higher infection rates first. And we're also suggesting that in future years, they should, when they prioritize which hospitals they inspect each year, they should look at the hospitals with significantly high infection rates. So there's a lot of issues in here. They're all related to this, this issue of not sharing information. Again, we believe that it's widespread problem. We know that it goes on in a few states, and we might ask some of you to try to find out if it's in existence in your state. We had a meeting with CDC staff last summer, and Dr. Frieden came to that meeting briefly. Uh, it was a group of activists, and Carol, Alicia, and I all raised this firewall issue, and Dr. Frieden indicated that he felt the firewall was very important and it should not be violated, that there should be a firewall between these two parts of health departments so that the infection folks can help hospitals and the regulatory staff is sort of in the dark as to what the hospital's record is. So all the way from the top and down through the system, this is a problem. We've all been working on reporting infections for many years, and now we have a good number of years of history, and we think it's time for hospitals to be held more accountable for their high rates. So I'm going to stop there and see if there are any questions.